Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin. Kama swalaita ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Assalamu alaikum brothers. Alaykum Brothers, first I want to give you congratulations because we've entered a new Islamic year. It's a new opportunity for us to inshallah attain Allah's pleasure and to seek his forgiveness and to maybe inshallah in this year resume the Islamic way of life and re-establish the Islamic state inshallah so this is a joyous occasion for us inshallah a new opportunity and as many of you are aware obviously the calendar that we follow in Islam is different from the Gregorian calendar is the Hijri calendar and it started last Monday uh, sorry this Monday just gone 6th of December on the night because obviously in Islam the day starts before on the night before isn't it yeah so today is like I think the sixth day and the seventh night of Muharram, um, and obviously the first month of the year is uh, first month of the year in Islam is Muharram, and we know that in Islam every month has particular recommended actions, yeah, particular recommended actions that you should do. So in Ramadan, the recommended action, or actually the obligatory action, is as fasting, isn't it? Yeah, and we know that in Dhul Hijjah. The recommended or the obligatory action rather in Abdul Hijjah is the Hajj, the performance of Hajj. And in Shawwal, a recommended action is the sixth fast of Shawwal. But in Muharram, there's also recommended actions. There's also some recommended actions. Yeah? And the hadith of Rasulullah yeah, as reported by Abu Hurairah, he said that the Prophet said, The best of fasts after the month of Ramadan are in the month of Allah, which you call Muharram. And the best of prayer after the obligatory prayer is the night prayer, as recorded in Muslim. Now, here we can see the Prophet ﷺ, he calls this month the month of Allah. Muharram, the month of Allah. <coughs> Sorry, I apologize. I've been having a bit of an illness this week, so um, it's, um, if, if my words are, if I, uh, if I make any stops or I make any uh, breaks in my speech, it's because of that, yeah, so... Inshallah, I'll try to be as uh, you know harmonious as possible. Inshallah. Yeah. Um, so, as you said, this month, Allah, uh, Prophet Sallam, he said it's best to fast in this month. Yeah, but he said that this month is known as the month of Allah. Now, so that say that it's the month of Allah, it means it's something special to him, something special to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And it's not surprising that in this month, this month of Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He encourages us to do an action which is also something that he claims is, from, is for himself. Yeah? Which is, in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, or in hadith Qudsi rather, Allah SWT inspired Muhammad ﷺ to say, Every action of the son of Adam is his, except fasting, it is mine. Except for fasting, it is mine. And it is I who reward it. <coughs> so fasting, as we know, is an action that is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because whenever you fast, it's not something that anyone else can see. It's something that you hide. It's something that you do only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you can go into your house and you could eat, isn't it? No one would know this. You don't know if somebody's fasting or not. They could be lying. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly knows. And similarly like that, this is the month of Allah. Just like fasting is for Allah, this month is for Allah. So we should recognize the virtue and the honor of this month. And the recommended action in this month is to fast, voluntary fast, outside Ramadan. So we should definitely try to do that. But the best or the most important day in this month is, as the brother mentioned, is Yawm al-Ashura, the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram. And on this day it's also recommended to fast and to give charity. But before we discuss, uh, before we talk more about the day of Ashura, I want to go back to why it's important. Yeah? I want to go back to and understand why is Yawm al-Ashura so important or so highly regarded and for us why should we regard it so highly, why should we honor this day and to do this we need to look at the story of Prophet Musa and Bani Israel, the children of Israel, the Israelites yeah? and I'm sure you guys are familiar with the story of Musa how Musa he was sent to Fir'aun he was sent to Egypt, and Egypt at the time, I should explain a bit about Egypt at the time, I'm sure you guys are aware, 
they had a kingdom. The Egyptians had a kingdom. They had Pharaoh, he was the king, and he actually proclaimed himself to be God, yeah? <coughs> the one that they should worship. And he said, I had all power. But on top of that, the Egyptians, they were a powerful force. And the reason they were so powerful is because they had enslaved another people. Not just enslaved, they had some slaves working for them, they had enslaved the whole nation. The children of Israel, yeah? Bani Israel, who used to work for them, do all the manual labor for them. Yeah? And who were the ones who helped build the, build the pyramids that you see in Egypt today. Yeah? This is the remnants of that great empire. And I think something that we should definitely know is that, look, where is this empire today? Where is this great empire that built these pyramids? Where is it today? It's gone. It's vanished. Because every empire that comes, that does not follow the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will have some power maybe for a while, if it's lucky. But then it will fade away like every other empire. But only the Islamic empire, only the, Islam, only the empire that rules by Islam, that rules by the sharia is the one that will last. And although that's not the point of today's story, I just wanted to highlight that point. That it's something that we should reflect upon. And inshallah, something that we should remember. But going back to the story of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, he came to Pharaoh. And he said to Pharaoh, <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. He came to Pharaoh and he said to Pharaoh that you need to let my people go. Yeah? You need to let my people go. Bani Israel go. Yeah? And you need to worship... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Don't worship anyone else. And what was Fir'aun's response? Yeah? He didn't say, yeah, alright, safe, yeah. Fir'aun said, he goes, they're my slaves. You want my slaves to go? And Musa Islam said, no. They are the slaves of Allah, the Lord of the worlds. At this point, Musa, uh, Fir'aun, he was, uh, he was stumped. He was shocked that this man was challenging his authority. But Fir'aun, when he told people, you know what they say, if you tell a lie enough, you'll believe it. Yeah? He told the people he was God so many times that he actually started believing he was God as well. Yeah? So he thought, how is this man going to come and tell me to let go of my slaves, let go of my power? So he said, no. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tested, Fir he tested Firaun, he tested the Egyptians by sending plagues upon them. Many different, several different plagues upon them. Yeah? And although we don't want to go into it today, these plagues, every time the plague came, the Egyptians, they, they said, okay, we accept the demands of Musa and his God. But as soon as the plague was lifted, as soon as Musa السلام, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as soon as the plague was lifted, these people, they said, oh, you know what, we're not going to do that. Yeah, they broke their promise each and every time. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent another plague upon them. Yeah, and they relented. And then they broke the promise. And then again, and then again. And, and after a point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this, we're not going to waste any more time. Yeah? These people, they're not going to listen. So he commanded Musa alayhi salam, that you need to take your people and you need to get out of Egypt. Yeah? In secrecy. So under the cover of darkness, one night, Musa alayhi salam, he gathered up Bani Israel and, and they left. Yeah? And this is known in uh, Christian literature as the Exodus. Yeah? The time when... Uh, the Israelites, they left Egypt, yeah? They made, a, they, made a, they made a run for it, yeah? And Fir'aun, when he woke up in the morning, he heard about this. Yeah, so he dispatched his, he led, he led his army, he got his army river and they, dis, they chased Bani Israel. So by this time, Musa alayhi salam, yeah, he had reached uh, the Red Sea, yeah? And we all know about this, isn't it? He reached the Red Sea, and he and Bani Israel were aware that Fir'aun and his army were after them. And one of the people from Bani Israel, yeah, upon seeing this situation that we've got a massive sea in front of us, and we've got an army that wants to kill us behind us, he exclaimed, he goes, in front of us is this impassable barrier, the sea, and behind us the enemy. Surely death cannot be avoided. Surely death cannot be avoided. Yeah? This was his response. And what did Musa alayhi salam, how did Musa alayhi salam respond? He replied that he would wait for guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he waited. And Allah told him, you need to strike your staff on the ground. And when he struck his staff on the ground, the sea parted. The sea, it parted. And it formed mountains on the side almost. Mountains of water. Yeah.